Ken Stott is a very busy actor. The Hobbit films last year's TV drama, The Missing, and now back on stage in a modern classic, The Dresser. Stott plays a grand but waning actor, struggling to play King Lear in a wartime theatre while an air raid is going on overhead. I talked to Ken Stott, ahead of the play's London transfer, and he told me about the big ego that defines his character, the often monstrous Sir. It, what I think is most important here, it, it's the quality of, um, uh, of being driven. Uh, those who are driven, people who are driven, are impossible to live with and make life hell <laughs> for those around them. Uh, here is no different. This is, it, in, in, in a sense, this is the personification of it. And everybody living really quite poorly, there's no money around, life is tough. Mm -hmm. And that is still the same for actors today. Uh, life was tough because these were touring companies that, uh, that toured in terrible conditions, uh, living in cold conditions. Life was very, very hard. I remember, I'm, I'm old enough to remember uh, theatrical digs. Mm. Uh, I remember Mrs. Law in Belfast, um, where we had an open fire, but there was only one in the house. And we came home from the theater to cold sandwiches, and there was enough coal for us to have, to have an hour's worth of fire, and then we'd all have to go to bed. <laughs> life was like yeah. this. And for people watching who you know, see people like yourself and think an actor's life is an terribly glamorous one and it, it's fantastic. And it's, mm. What about young actors? Working in London in particular is mm. incredibly hard for young people trying to make their way up. Yes, it's very hard. It's very hard for them. When unions were involved, you had to be a member of equity to be an actor. Uh, there was a closed shop operating. It made life very difficult. It made it very, very difficult for you to become an actor. But those who did, did so because they persevered. It would sort out the wheat from the chaff in that those who stuck with it, those who persevered, went on. And of course, it also, it also meant that the standard of work uh, you, could, you could in many ways rely on. Not so now. Now anybody can be an actor. You don't have to be a member of the union. You can work wherever you like television, film, theatre, in London, in the West End, people pay £65 to £100 for a seat. They want, they want, to, they want to see professionals, but they, they don't see somebody who's made a bad choice uh, choosing somebody who can't act. Um, and, and, and the union would help in that way. And your character here, playing Lear, mm. is clearly a, a great figure, a great actor. Um, the next Lear, we are told, is going to be Glenda Jackson, aged 80. Do you have any suggestion for her? Well, uh, I would say to Glenda that uh, it's a great idea. I quote uh, Ronnie Harwood here, I hope you have the health and the strength to go on. Because it's a heck of a role. Because it's a hell of a role. Uh, I know it's a hell of a role, although I haven't played it, because I play Sir mm. in this. And quite frankly, playing this is pretty much as bad as playing, as playing. Sir, that's playing the end. Can we move from, from theatre to TV? And the last big drama success was The Missing. In many ways, a really, really hard subject. Echoes the McCann story a bit, and your character is a pretty noxious Peter Farber. You got it wrong. Where is he? Wait, it, it's not what you, it's not what you Is this him on here? You've been mm. quite critical about the current condition of TV drama. Too many explosions, too much CGI. We've got a new toy now. We've got a new toy, and, and we can make things, we can make anything happen on, on, on screen. We can make people's faces morph into something else. I say, all right, listen, can we just, can we get over it now? Because what really, really is important, ultimately, is a relationship between people. That's what we really want to see as, as people, as members of the human race. So worry more about the writing and about the acting, less about the glossy production value. Yes, exactly. You, you know, let's start writing about relationships. We're now living in a world of superhero. Every, you know, I, 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 if I was to give um, uh, advice to a young actor today, I'd say, well, listen, here's what you do. Um, I'd say do uh, an, an hour of drama classes per week and do 42 hours of gym. Because that's how you're going to be an actor <laughs> in this climate. Now, um, y you play, sir, in a Scots accent, and you supported the nationalist cause <laughs> during the last referendum. How do you now feel about it all after Brexit, look at, looking at that whole episode? We have Brexit. We have, which is in effect, uh, English independence. 
uh, and Eng England is taking, it, it wants to take Scotland and Northern Ireland with it. It's already got Wales because they voted Brexit. Now, Scotland, Scotland has only since the war, since Attlee's government, it has only received the, the uh, government it voted for twice since the war. That's not democracy. In order to, to achieve democracy, Scotland should be independent. It, 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 Scotland is a country that is uh, an oil producing country about the same size as Denmark. And so you see a second referendum as essential after Brexit? It's essential, absolutely essential. To, uh, to, to, to shy away from that is, is undemocratic. Ken Stott, thank you very much <laughs> indeed for talking to us. It's a pleasure.